Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Fallen London. We are going to continue with the exceptional story, Deja Vu. And we've just woken up at the crack of dawn in our own bedroom. There's been a knock at the door. Do these people have beds of their own? Well, let's answer the door. You're not going to get back to sleep with that racket going on. You open the door. It is not, as you half expected, your nocturnal employer. It is the young artist you lifted off the dance floor earlier, and with whom you subsequently transversed the world of dream. Oh, hello, the diffident dramatist says. The diffident dramatist paces back and forward in front of your doorstep. How do you know where I live? You don't remember giving out calling cards during last night's dream? He puts a hand to his mouth. He seems genuinely embarrassed. I'm sorry, he says. I didn't realize it was a secret. Perhaps you're more of a public figure than you think. Should I, um, wait around the corner and see if you stroll by later? Okay, that's fair. Everyone does know who we are. Let's ask how he is feeling. For a person who was knocked off his feet and abducted by bats. The dramatist rubs his head. Kind of you to ask. I feel like I've had a bit of a honey dream, he says slowly. Do you know anything about that? Your thoughts turn to the Pontanari and the refreshing tipples you selected. They didn't taste of honey. There was a round of canapes just before midnight. Sweet canapes. The dramatist insists on knowing whether you were responsible for an intake of prisoner's honey. I'm going to deny all knowledge. Whatever your views on honey, you had nothing to do with this involuntary dosage. He frowns. If it wasn't your doing, I might go and have a word with the owner. Would you care to join me? Perhaps you would. The Stygian colorist lingers outside the closed doors of the Pontanari. Her narrowed eyes suggest that morning is not her natural environment. At the sight of the diffident dramatist, she softens a little. How are you? She asks. Are both of you? Let's ask about her dreams. What does she recall? The colorist pauses for a moment, emotions battling on her brow. I remember I had all the colors I desired, and I was part of a group, and I was working, and I was happy, and it was all taken away. He glances up, searching the skyline. Oh, I don't blame you. Some greater force is at work here. Do you know about the weary debaucher? He might live on the premises. Has she tried to rouse him? Have I tried? She shows you her bleeding knuckles. I was on the point of looking for a dustbin to smash his damn door in. But you're here now. Feel free to take over. Nice. We can consider the colorist and dramatist as a possible couple. Seems to be something between them. Shared honey dreams are notorious for creating intimacy. The stiff regulation of society means little once you have held hands and walked through one another's subconscious. No doubt Dr. Shlomo has written extensively on the subject. Could that combination work? She is seeking a palette she can no longer have. He is clinging to the last of his idealism. Each needs something new to value, and their experiences, whilst diverse, might be harmonious. The subject, however, can wait. Let's hammer his door in. Why should the debaucher get to have a lazy morning? He regularly denies you. You pound on the Portinari's doors. It only takes a few rounds before you hear the irritable voice of the debaucher. Yes, yes, a moment, please. The bolt slides back, 
and he ears out. Step inside, and the debaucher immediately closes the door on his aggrieved customers. Can't stay away, I see. The debaucher wears a silk robe and a matching nightcap. The knocking begins again at an apologetic volume. Through the door, you distinctly hear the colorist say, Put your back into it. What's all the fuss about? The debaucher asks. Do you need the hair of the dog? Uh, that's taking an alcoholic beverage in the morning to cure a hangover for those uninitiated. <laughs> Let's ask about the canapes. He added prisoner's honey to the late night stack, correct? The debaucher looks shocked. No, I did actually think about doing that, but the lawyer said that dousing customers with an hallucinogenic toxin might create liability issues, so I didn't. He frowns and looks over at the dance floor. I wonder, he says. I did say the decorations were artificial. You need a touch of class, you know. Got a good deal on some leftover exotic plants. The original client didn't like them because the fruit looked strange. Like, well, frankly, like human heads. Extraordinary features, just like eyes. They did make an odd whispering noise, but we lopped them off and... After that, the foliage was just the ticket. You don't think those plants could have anything to do with this dream? What did he call them? Parabolin? You stare at the man. He has found a way to make this your fault. The debaucher leans against the wall and sighs. Let's ask why he keeps trying with the portinari. He is out of ideas. He is making bad decisions. He looks exhausted. Why keep going around in circles? The debaucher looks up, surprised. I... I... He stares at the floor. I suppose I've been waiting for a sign that I should move on. The final remnants of last night's ebullient persona drop away, revealing the fear in his eyes. I've forgotten how to do anything else. If there's nothing else, I'd like to get back to bed. The debaucher stifles a yawn. Well, let's get paid. It seems increasingly unwise to postpone it. The debaucher opens his palms I'm afraid I... I can't. You step a little closer and explain that he can. With ill grace, he takes you up to his office and offers you a series of knickknacks, explaining each bauble has come from the Elder Continent, Asterval or even Birmingham. Your gaze falls on a stoppered bottle of Carganian label. Oh no! The debaucher protests. I've been saving that. But he did say you could select your own reward. To an extent, he mutters. Hey, a bottle of Fourth City Air Ag. I feel we used to get this all the time and haven't seen it for a long time. The debaucher presses his palms together. Enough of this, he says. What are we doing for next week? So I can sever all ties, you don't need to be associated with this type of thing, or I can invest long term. Someone with his models will probably make you money. In the long run. 700 pennies. This will gain you a new, but not completely reliable business opportunity. Its cost scales with the expense of the Portinari redevelopment. I'm going to invest long term just because it int intrigues me. Whether I'll be able to show this on on camera here is another thing completely but I'm going to do it anyway splendid the debaucher checks the clock almost eight o'clock he says and pours out two glasses of moral ways it seems a waste of time to point out that most people make that decision at eight in the evening 
Over the next 20 minutes, he outlines his plans for the Portinari. Despite everything, he has entrepreneurial flair. This could be the beginning of something lucrative. Time will tell. You wave off his second offer of wine and slip out a side door. Your acquaintances from the dream are still lurking outside. They seem to have calmed down. The Stygian colorist beckons you over. We were wondering, the diffident dramatist says, what do you think our shared dream meant? What will it mean for London? The colorist scrapes her boot on the ground. Her anger seems to have given way to unease. It shows a desire to move on. All things must end. The, altern the alternative to progress is stagnation. It urges commitment. All relationships have ups and downs. The next one will be no different. Or it means nothing. Images from Parabola do not translate into the real world. Let's go, it shows a desire to move on. London is the fifth city. That is no reason to believe it should be the last. You walk on the fragments of those that came before, and some of their stories are still there, hidden. But mostly, they are gone. The Neath's flexible relationship with death offers Londoners longer to walk their path than most surface dwellers. Your new acquaintances are creative people, their environment in constant flux. They should follow their instincts to produce work for tomorrow, not yesterday, and perhaps send you invitations to their lunch parties, and we gained a memory of a tale with an extraordinary implication. That would indicate this is the end of the exceptional story. Ah, yes, here we go. The two of them seem to accept your interpretation. They are, however, not reassured. You examine one, then the other. Will either of them return to the Portinari next week? It's doubtful. We can leave them together. Perhaps their association will continue. Perhaps it will not. We can deepen our acquaintance with a diffident dramatist. There is room in your life for an earnest young playwright. He is watchful and persuasive. Or we can pursue friendship with the Stygian colorist. It might be fun to know a painter who disappears entirely at the slightest shadow. A small part of me would like to pursue friendship with the Stygian colorist because shadowry is my kind of weakest stat, but another part of me wants to just leave them together. Perhaps they are better together. Let's leave them together. You glance at the Portinari as you take your leave. These new nightclubs are paces to let off steam, to quicken the pulse, to squeeze every drop of pleasure from the final hours of a finite day. But they are also halls of possibility, and the stage from which new stories begin. The corner, you sneak a last look at your companions in dream. The dramatist is gesturing wildly, mouth open. The colorist watches. Perhaps the corner of her mouth is turned up. Difficult to tell at this distance. And this is the end of Deja Vu. We got Antique Mystery. Nice. Will I be able to pull a Portinari card? Just to see what it does. Let's see if we let's just get through some of these here. Maybe. It's long term, so I'm not gonna hold my breath here. Ah, uh, it's fine. I can get these back. I'm not seeing anything here. I dream about a stable, I'd rather not. I want to see if I can get an example, but it does not appear to be the case. So, with that, I shall be ending this episode here. It's a little bit of a short one. That was a bit of a, a bit of a surprise ending for me, but either way, I hope you enjoyed this story. I thought it was written very well. I enjoyed our look around weird London. I'm wondering where this is going in terms of the overarching story of Fall in London, because obviously we are stuck in 1899, because the Queen says so. But it seems like the world is disagreeing. And maybe there will be a big change in the future. But either way, please like and subscribe, it really does help the channel grow. Thank you again to the members and the coffee supporters, it helps me keep making these videos. And as always, 
I'll see you next time.